Healthcare is constantly improving. There are now ways for people to freeze their own stem cells. The hope is for people to use those cells in case they need them to heal themselves later. Founder and CEO of Next Healthcare Inc., Vin Singh, is here to discuss stem cell banking. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. What is your role within the company? I'm, I'm the founder and CEO of the company, so I'm, I'm leading the company, uh, leading the strategy, building a team, and uh, making sure we hit our goals. Wait, why was this company created? Well, the idea uh, came about uh, six years ago, seven years ago. A uh, technology called IPS technology was discovered, and that's a technology where you can take a skin cell and convert it into a stem cell, and then that stem cell can become you know, any cell type in the body. It was at that point where I said, wow, you know, this is a big deal. And with my background in cell therapy, I understood what the pros and cons of that approach would be. And I said to myself, this, you know, everybody has to bank their cells. This is a must. And then a few years later, I started Next Healthcare. And now we offer you know, skin cell banking and stem cell banking and other services related to that. Okay, and we're going to kind of break it down now. What is a stem cell? A stem cell is defined as a cell that has unlimited or virtually unlimited ability to multiply and unlimited ability to differentiate into all the different cell types in your body. What is the potential healing power behind the stem cell? It's unlimited uh, because you know, that's what we, we're, we are created from, right? That's how we started. So uh, stem cells can be uh, differentiated into heart cells, nerve cells, lung cells, you know, uh, pancreatic cells. So the, the potential is unlimited. Now, stem cells have to be extracted from the body somehow. What is this process? So there's different ways you can do it. Uh, right now, you have stem cells circulating in your body. Uh, we collect blood, and we are able to uh, uh, isolate some of those cells, and we store them in our, uh, our uh, liquid nitrogen tanks. Uh, we also collect skin samples. You can get stem cells from your bone marrow, uh, and that's a pretty well-recognized uh, approach. Uh, there are 50,000 bone marrow transplants done a year worldwide, and the reason is, be, you know, the, the reason they're effective is the stem cells that are in there. Um, there's also stem cells in fat. There's stem cells in every tissue in your body. And now you mentioned um, storing the stem cells. What is the banking aspect? Can you explain that? So, so the cells, after we process them, uh, we we store them in multiple vials, and that's your bank, and that allows you to have several opportunities to use those cells in the future. They're stored in liquid nitrogen. The reason is liquid nitrogen is at a temperature that is so low that all metabolic activity in the cell stops. It's like suspended animation. And that allows you to store these cells for, you know, theoretically forever, but f certainly for a very, very long time. What are some of the diseases that, you know, are being looked at as potential um, diseases to be treated from stem cell? Stem cells right now are in the clinic for about a dozen different disease categories, pretty much anything you can think of. The ones I like to talk about the most are the, the later stage, so phase three trials. These are the last stage of clinical trials before they can get market approval. Uh, in that category, there's about 42 phase three trials worldwide, and they are primarily looking at uh, blood cancers, autoimmune disease, and heart disease. So I would say they're the likely uh, you know, candidates to get approved as products and procedures. Okay, um, you know, what are the benefits of stem cell th you know, research compared to other types of treatments for these diseases? The big benefit is they're your own cells. And that way, uh, when you're using your own cells, your body's not going to reject them. Uh, when you're talking about drugs, some of them work, some of them don't. You know, not everybody's body responds well to them. But these are your own cells. So then the question is, will they be effective in the treatment? And there's so much going on in the clinic right now. The, it, the outlook is extremely positive. So the trend line is positive. Um, I think over the next few years, five years, you're going to see you know, many uh, approved products and procedures that use stem cells. Now we're talking about people taking their own cells, storing it, and then potentially using their own cells to treat a disease. Correct. But can people use others stem cells? So there are public banks, uh, for example, in the umbilical cord blood banking industry. 
They do uh, bank some of that material for public use, meaning you know it's, uh, you, you bank it from one child and then you can use it for another uh, or an adult potentially. Um, our uh, services are primarily for the person that banked the cells. That doesn't mean th there are situations where you know the bone marrow could potentially be donated, um, but what we're doing is for what we call autologous use, meaning use for the, the donor only. Where do you see the stem cell banking going in the future? Well, I think you know I bank my own cells, uh, you know, for peace of mind, and because I believe that medicine is heading in a direction where we are all going to be treating our diseases and injuries with our own cells. So I think you know, now is the time, this is the perfect time. We're, we're at a, a special uh, point in the, in the evolution of medicine and stem cells and regenerative medicine, and this is the inflection point. And I think this is you know, perfect timing for this. All right, well thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing this very interesting information with us. Thank you.